Now I have beef. Um, I think Ashok is not romantic at all, and I will tell you why he is not. Um, because see, people like me, when we write about food, we talk about food, and we will like make you salivate, like, "Oh my God, this is so good!" Even if it's a bhindi ki sabzi, doesn't matter. But you're like, "Oh my God, yes, we want that, right?" So much of flowery language, like a full William Wordsworth will come outside. Uh, and make people fall in love and food romance i think what better than food romance but when then comes him and he's like oh no no logic science all that why do that <laughs> <laughs> excellent question so first thing right i disagree with this idea that science is not romantic okay <laughs> i mean different chemistry we'll go to that right so to be fair hello <laughs> this, this problem starts in like class 9 where teachers and parents and everyone will look at kids and say are you romantic are you unromantic are you romantic arts <laughs> are you unromantic engineering medicine okay and then are you showing any signs of romance tuition classes please beat all romance out of your this thing right and then you go do engineering and then you work in it companies you do all of that and then all the romance is beat out of you entirely right so in a sense i think uh, we've also forgotten how to learn science and we learn it through equations and textbooks that are like completely i mean yes they are indeed unromantic but to be fair the world of food is the one place where science can actually be romantic right so when you take an onion as one does every day in india unless you're jain and you and and you butcher it right um and you cut through the cells of the onion so the cells of the onion basically say ha huh, i'm being killed so let's do this so let's produce an enzyme that will then form a chemical reaction that creates a, a volatile sulfurous thing that when it goes to your eyes breaks down into dilute sulfuric acid okay so the onion's way of saying are you going to kill me i'm going to do a acid attack on you <laughs> it doesn't get any more hardcore bollywood than than a story like this and just take the story of the mango for instance right so the mango essentially the raw mango starts out green right? we all know it's green and you know by the way there's one very sticky white thing that comes on the tree very nasty stuff it's called urushiol and it'll burn your mouth if you it's 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 a thoroughly nasty stuff it's basically the tree saying not quite ready yet so please don't eat right and then at some point of time the tree then tells the uh the mango listen I have given you life I, you are now you are now getting ready but now I need you to do something for me I need you to kill yourself right so to do that I'm going to cut off supply of all the things that will prevent you from being eaten no urushiol no tannins none of that stuff and I'm going to turn all your starch into sugars so that you become astonishingly delicious i'm going to make a bunch of these molecules that make you so attractive and so amazing that there is romance poetry written in india about mangoes right and then you will go give your life so that the seed you carry which is our baby can go grow somewhere else so this is the story of every fruit so basically see the point is that i'm pretty certain this is not how it was explained in your biology textbook it probably said dicotyledon monocotyledon angiosperm gymnosperm and this is you know asexual sexual reproduction i mean they took the romance out of right only in a biology textbook can they use the term sexual reproduction and completely kill the romance out of uh, um, anything and so in that sense i i really think it's about how you tell the story and how you look at the word i think there is romance everywhere two different definitions of romance some like it hard some like it soft <laughs> yes. yeah. when i was writing my first book um I was talking about this kind of meta love, and I talked about um, kidney, heart, liver, goat balls, etc. Right? Then a friend of mine who was reading the, the, my my book first, she said, "No, you, no, write innards. Sounds so good, right?" So and then Krishna like, <laughs> let's let's just stick to the main point. Yes. The other thing is, um, often when I go meet people, um, not my age people, but the elder ones mostly mothers and uncles uh they like me uh 
Why? No, nothing like that. But they like me because you know I talk their language. I talk about oh, listen, we you know chule ki roti, slow cooking food, dal makhani, and then if you're making a mutton, it must be cooked for at least eight hours, and that's when you get the juices and all that jazz, right? Yeah. Or for example, halim. It's winter time, so when you make halim, it must be cooked for eight hours and two different pots. Um, so and I again over romanticize, not just romanticize, over romanticize all these things. Krish comes. Ashok, pressure cook it, mic drop, again. Why do that? Why? Again, remove the romance yes. completely. Like we have yeah. all the much time in life. Yes. It is. <laughs> please do some hustle uh, and figure out pressure cooker. Why? Why they have invented pressure yes. cooker anyway? Yes. So, so what is the what is your problem with slow cooking? So it has been my experience that um, Indian uncles, particularly NRIs and uh, and generally, Indian uncles over like 50, 55 years old, right? Uh, when they use the word romance, and when they especially romanticize about these things, right? Um, it's not actually romance. What, what they're actually expressing is, is a desire for uh, women in their lives to stay in the kitchen all their lives, right? So basically, <laughs> no, no, chutney, mixy. No, my grandfather used to say, chutney in a mixy, no, the taste won't come. You have to take this heavy stone and grind it, right? And then same, like my grandfather didn't know the signs, but Uncle G's today are like, you know, when the mortar and pestle, it actually damages more cells and releases more aroma. Now they're using food chemistry also to justify <laughs> patriarchy and, you know, manual labor, right? So at the end of the day, I think uh, um, if you love it and if you have the privilege and if you have the time, go for it. I think there's nothing better than slow cooked mutton. There is actually, in fact, in general, right? Uh, meat is best cooked low and slow, right? Uh, but again, you know, do you have the time for it? I mean, does everyone have the, uh, we all, you know, uh, both men and women work now and we have jobs and uh, we need to embrace convenience. And it's, it's quite interesting, right? So somehow within Indian subcontinent, you can see these differences, right? Um, cultures that were rice eating, curiously, were the first places where women went to school. Yeah, because, you know, it's, if you're making chapatis, you're doing it all day okay, in a joint family. <laughs> so rice, rice, you know, you can make one shot for everyone, then you can go to school, study, go to work and all of that, right? <laughs> in fact, the British, when they, when, they, when they tried to introduce wheat to ask South Indians to eat wheat, they're like, what are you talking about? Our women have been working since 1920s. They've been voting since the 1920s. Who's going to sit and make chapati? For all these useless men here, no, no, if you want us to eat, if you want us to make wheat, give it in a form that cooks like rice. So the British introduced semolina or rava, right? And then some folks here invented MTR, the guy founded MTR, invented the rava, it, uh, rava idli, and then uh, uh, upma was popularized. I mean, it all, all, always existed here, but it was popularized in restaurants as a replacement for pungal. And things. So in, in my opinion, I think, you know, if you look at Southeast Asia, it's a classic example, right? Thai people make amazing food. Have you seen how they cook? They take a paste straight out of the, the freezer. Yellow curry paste, green curry paste, that curry paste, pour a can of uh, uh, coconut milk and five minutes that entire dish is done, right? And so in the sense that again, I think you will find that uh, Asian societies, uh, that in general, as they kind of go towards modernity and hopefully alongside that liberating women as well, the first thing that will happen is people will spend less time in the kitchen, but still have a delicious food because they will embrace convenience when it makes sense. Right? South Indians use pressure cooker. All the anti-pressure anti -pressure cooker stuff comes only from North India. <laughs> they don't even use pressure cooker, but they know for sure it will destroy nutrients. It will kill whatever. I don't know. <laughs> yes. North Indians are like the brute force. We like it. Like anybody from Delhi? <laughs> Nobody will raise and no, 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 it's no. Bangalore, a lot of people will be from Delhi, but they won't put their oh, hands yeah. up here. <laughs> no, so here's the thing, Delhi yes. people, they don't know how to appreciate food. They, need, they won't, they know how to hog. Right? Appreciation, zero. Yes, Lucknow is distant, but Delhi doesn't, it's a very warrior food, so they don't care about pressure cooker. Yes. But which, so I'll, I'll come to you, then you guys in a moment, but which one do you prefer? The mutton slow cooked? Prefer as in flavor wise? Flavor wise, yeah. Uh, which one is better for you? Pressure cooked, one hour sorted, or like eight hours? No, if I have the choice to, the eight hour slow cooked is absolutely way more flavorful. For simple chemistry reasons, the, the gelatin um, is formed only when your connective tissue 
is heated at a low temperature, below, well below boiling point of water yeah. over a long period of time. The moment you do it at a, a pressure cooker, it is actually is going to get tough and fibrous rather than become soft and fall off the bone. That's, oh, you're only going to get that if you... But again, as I said, for people who are used to really rubbery, hard mutton, that's fine. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a quick and dirty thing and, you know, it's, it's fine. But yeah, of course, if you truly want to enjoy gastronomically what it is, of course, the slow cooking way is, is flavor-wise better. Nutritionally, they're all the same. And chutney? Chutney, same thing. Again, the mortar and pestle, the science is actually right. Yeah. right? So the uncle got the science right. right? So yeah, nowadays, the fashionable thing is to be patriarchal while being scientific also. Right? <laughs> so there's an obsession. See, every day, nowadays in India, no? People need to say, my ancestors were right because of quantum physics, because of Newton. They need to justify, retroactively justify. But in this case, they're actually right. Uh, but yes, as I said, I don't know how many people have a mortar and giant mortar and pestle at home. Uh, but yeah, so the, the mortar and pestle chutney is absolutely more flavorful because you're going to re release more flavonoids. Uh, and the high heat of the mixi is actually going to denature a lot of the aroma molecules. So it actually, that's why when you make idli or dosa, if you make it in a mixi, it's less likely to ferment as well as if you make it in a wet grinder where the temperature is lower. Yeah. So I'll come to you then because this is another slow versus fast. Uh, people who've been to Punjab, Ambassa especially, uh, there's dal, right? Amrsi, the Amrsi, not Amrsi dal, but different names for Maki dal. Yes. Uh, the pop. <laughs> Say hello to Mama. Yes. Um, so they take pride, like uh, Kesa the Dhaba, Prava the Dhaba, yes. Brothers, New Brothers Dhaba. They take eight hours, ten hours. Uh, and you know, I remember uh, three years back, I was working in Delhi in uh, at this QSR kind of a restaurant. And we were working on dal. And I called up this guy and I said, listen, uh, soak the dal one night before. The next morning I'll come and I will fix the dal because you do because they were also bawa cheese, right? So all of them look like, okay, fine. I reached there, they have not done any of those things. Nothing. Right? And I said, dude, you were supposed to be cooking. Let it like let those the dal sit on the counter and I will come yeah. in the morning or afternoon actually and I will fix it. Uh didn't do it. Uh Jhatpat, Pandra minutes, literally 15 minutes, dal makhni was ready. I'm yes. like, wait, what just happened? Now, I will tell you the results later. You have issue with that as well. This I don't. I mean, say, let's look at it this way, right? I'm pretty sure what they did was use baking soda to pressure cook it, right? Uh, no, no, dal was boiled separately already. <laughs> that's fine, right? So in general, I think, you know, a, a dal makhani is a easily a 9 to 10 hour dish if you actually soak it and, and slow cook it and so on. In a restaurant, I would be very surprised if people went and ordered dal makhani and said, so please come back 9 hours later, it'll be ready. So people would generally like to eat it like in the next 10 minutes, right? Um, so clearly the dal has to be pre-cooked, right? And uh, uh, the makani gravy is going to be pre-cooked and then you're going to slap the one thing that makes everything delicious, which is butter um, and, and cream and, and, and you're done, right? Now, the interesting thing that I learned particularly from when I met this sort of Punjabi chef once is that one, how restaurant Punjabi and home Punjabi are entirely different things. It, it, this is true of all things. Restaurant version of any cuisine, very different from home version of any cuisine. The restaurant version of any cuisine is surprisingly focused on productivity. Meaning that I need to be able to make this dish reliably. I need to be able to prep ahead, store stuff in the fridge. Whereas home version is Uncle Ji saying, no, 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 everything fresh. Grow the wheat, harvest it, cut the sugar cane. Farm to table. Milk the cow, that for filter coffee. That is how I need my filter coffee, sort of. That is a home approach, right? So many dishes that cannot be parallel processed, usually don't make it to restaurants. And dal makhani, again, is a, is a classic example of that. Traditionally, the, they would heat the tandoor, right? And then they would place the dal in the cold tandoor, still warm, and then let it cook overnight. So what they noticed is that the black urad dal, particularly like lady's finger, produces a mucilaginous substance, which in the case of black dal, makes it buttery and creamy. So the dal makhani is not makhani because you slap one amul butter into it. It's makhani because slow cooked urad dal naturally makes it creamy. So you don't need butter at all when you actually, may, they might add because you know Punjabis add butter to everything, but, <laughs> but you don't need to. So the, the makhani part of dal makhani actually comes from the, the mucilage that the, the urad dal skin produces. That is slow cooked. And you're not going to get that in a restaurant at all. You're going to get that only if you go to somebody's home or a very 
you know, Michelin star in rural Punjab kind of place, which I'm assuming at some point of time will become a thing. Right? <laughs> so, like how the French introduced it, you can drive in a tractor, right, go there and eat in the field and all of that. I'm sure it'll be an experience at some point. It's happening time. already. Uh, <laughs> fun fact, trivia. Um, Urad Dal in Lucknow, Badai Mambala, it is said because of that. What was that? Mucilage. This one. Chip uh, <laughs> Chipa Padad. <laughs> also works, yes. For people who don't understand, yeah. I understand. Um, so that is, uh, people who've been to Lucknow would know, uh, Badai Mambala, and uh, they have used cement, mortar and all that, but also Urad Dal. Yes. Because of that, Musli. In between, yeah, yeah, yes. In between all that, it's Mus a folk. Musili sounds like some, you know, Italian uh, Punjabi fusion, like yeah. fusili, musili. <laughs> fusili. So that's a folk, folk thing. Yes. Huh. So now I wanted to basically a lot of ask because you know, sure, over the romanticized, the romanticized slow cook, but for people who are not cooking, who are just going to the restaurant, have you ever felt any difference? Unless it's written in the menu, slow cooked for eight hours. Have you ever noticed any difference? So there's a high likelihood that it's not slow cooked for eight hours. It's fast cooked for like 30 minutes. And that's it. So, I mean, because I have, I'm, I'm guilty of doing that. Uh, the only only place where I actually literally saw the makhni being cooked for that long was, I was shooting at Kesa the Dhaba in uh, Punjab, Amritsar. There was the only time when I saw this huge cauldron and then huge kalchi. Uh, and that was the only time when they were actually cooking, but nowhere else. So yeah, so does it really have, any, anybody, does it, do you think, taste changes if it's cooked in cooker versus mixer, hand ground and all that? Do you guys think, I mean, uh, can most of you tell the difference between something that has been microwaved versus something that has been lovingly cooked on a brass vessel <laughs> traditionally made <laughs> in rural Karnataka? Can you tell the difference? Okay. Most people cannot, I think. Yeah. See, I, this is true, by the way, for wine also. Most wine experts cannot tell the difference between a thousand dollar wine and a fifteen dollar wine yeah. if they don't, can't see the bottle. But here's the amazing thing. The moment you see the bottle and the price tag, your brain will tell you that the expensive one tastes better. <laughs> so I think we're all like, you know, fallacious like that. Yes. Yeah. A couple of more questions. Um, <clears throat> again, uncle aunties like me because I talk about fresh food and I say, you know what? Freshness is all the thing. And, and I'm sure everyone here loves it, right? It must be fresh. Um, bindi, peas, it's the, it's the awesome of peas. Uh, matar, right? The yeah. classic Rajpal Yadav's dialogue, matar, hal cheese. Ne? Yeah. So we are talking matar. And then um, I made uh, in, in Bihar and Jharkhand, also in Pakistan, I just learned, <laughs> uh, and Mangal. There's a dish called uh, Chura Gugni, which is flattened rice, poha. And Gugni is either matar or kala chana, whatever it is, right? Yeah. Uh, we make it with uh, green peas. And because it's seasonal, um, so freshness remains apparently. Um, what do you think? Which would is 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 that a same patriarchy? Because now I can't. So yeah. my house help comes and I say, Hey, listen, you are not cooking today. Matar chilo. So she will be lovingly peeling the matter. Yes. Um, but what is your take on that? Fresh peas or fresh any vegetables yeah. versus packaged? So this again is a again convenience question, right? So is Winter Sorry, fresh nutrition wise as well. I also yeah. want to add that. So winter fresh peas that like you personally harvest and all of that, uh, and then you peel it and cook it. Amazing taste. There's no doubt about it, right? Uh, compared to uh, a frozen peas and so on. Right? But my only argument is, frozen peas is better than no peas. <laughs> and also, I think frozen peas is healthier than fresh. French fries that you order from Swiggy Zomato. Right? So I, I think, you know, sometimes people again use the word fresh to mean whatever it is they want to mean and to, to give a value judgment to stuff that they are comfortable eating. If you are living in a city, the concept of fresh is entirely bogus. Your vegetables are not fresh. Unless you grew them yourself, your vegetables were all harvested days or weeks ago and they are kept in a reasonable uh, uh, shape and condition using a lot of science that you probably don't want to know. And then it is kept in your supermarket. They, 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 have, they coat them with wax, they, they sprinkle water, they do all those things. It is, n it, it is in no stretch of imagination fresh in the sense that it was literally harvested a while ago. So you might want to rethink what fresh itself means, right? Uh, if you're living in a city. Only if you're living in a village where literally farm to table is a reality, is that technically fresh. Now, nutritionally speaking, there is very little difference. 
again the problem is the nutrition comes from what all you choose to eat and how much you eat rather than whether or not that ginger you used was artisanally home grown organic grown by you know uh, farmers uh, well paid farmers in in rural whatever right and so that stuff all those adjectives unfortunately don't add nutrition so as i said no see if you go to so there is a the curious thing if you go to a if you go to an american supermarket right, it it'll it'll happen here also it's starting to happen now i see three varieties but in us you can see 20 varieties eggs you will find eggs that are 2 dollars for a dozen to 13 dollars a dozen okay and somebody pointed out that that entire spectrum that you're paying extra for none of those extra dollars you're paying for nutrition you know what you're paying for you're paying for less cruelty so the 13 dollar egg the hen was likely actually running around etc etc <laughs> Two dollar egg never walked in its life. The chicken never walked in its life. Was in a cage all its life, right? So effectively, I think you know. But people sometimes combine all of that and say, no, 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 no. If I am paying thirteen dollars, I better convince myself that it is healthier. And the only way I can feel good about my expensive choices is by going telling everyone on Instagram that what you're eating is poison. That bread, white bread, poison. Bone vita, poison. Tang, pure sugar. I mean, it is just that I think there's that somehow need to justify. your choices without realizing that most choices are based on the on the basis of economics and whether you can afford uh, something or not right so fresh is the same thing right uh, for most people uh, processed food the reason processed food exists is because we urbanized and reason processed food exists because we not only did we urbanize but when it happened in uk factories were like why only have half why we can why we are only exploiting half the labor population right let's exploit the women also no so if women stop cooking at home come to the factory so part of the reason why british food sucks is because basically nobody is cooking at home it's just stuff out of a can uh, sausages and so on that's why british food is mostly uh, that sort of food and so effectively if you look at that sort of path over the rest of the world you will find that urbanization is meant that for most people the only way to get enough calories is to either process or package or do the things to food so that it doesn't spoil right and you can feed like 8 billion uh, people so i we're all like rich and privileged so now i can say no i will only eat this uh, expensive uh, 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 you know organic avocado grown outside uh, bangalore uh, but you know i will not eat this uh, mexican avocado that was shipped across uh, the continents all the carbon footprint all of that is very bad are not realizing that the carbon footprint of the imported avocado is actually less yeah. than the avocado you grow nearby because you know why the carbon cost of food is mostly in the input costs not in transportation and in tra transportation is only 20% of the cost and in transportation international shipping is extraordinarily efficient because if the ship carries like millions of tons you know where is most of the carbon cost the guy sitting in insta insta whatever they are swiggy guy sitting in traffic in bangalore traffic that is where your carbon cost is so you want to really be conscious go walk to your store in bangalore and buy whatever goddamn avocado you want instead yes. of posturing <laughs> yeah. it's just that you know yeah people have this completely you know distorted view of many of these ideas of fresh and sustainable and all of that yeah